some of the architecture we've done, uh, and I show this one because it shows how multiples are applied. <coughs> several activity models are required, several SD1s because those are the strands later on. And some of the other <coughs> architectures are needed. The scenarios are in there as a key point also because basically we get with the warfighter to figure out, okay, what scenario would you run? Is this a pilot down? Is this a soldier who's lost on a convoy and now he has a personnel locating beacon and you need to recover him? Because those processes change depending on who and what the person is. But by doing this our, and applying our engineers and their logic, we're able to go through and find some of the gaps and shortfalls. Another reason for this is architecture too often, it seems like, is just held to a select group over here, and then we pass it off to another group over here to, to do system, or we pass it off to another group to go ahead and run modeling and simulation. What we've done is we've brought together a group, and our, our groups are broken down into three phases. We have an operational group, we have an architecture group, and we have engineers. But all those groups have a part in the building of our Dota products, because you're really not going to build an SB5 Alpha unless you've got that engineer there with you who's done that research and says, yeah, that capability maps to this, or this function maps to that activity. And DoDAP is really trying to drive us that way when you look at 2.0. And I'm not really going to get on DoDAP high horse, but 2.0, if you look at it, the OV2 once was just node to node. Well, now they want to know what node maps to what activity, and that activity has to map to an activity inside another node. When you get to the SB1, and you really dig deep into our SB1 now, and you dig deep inside of it, they want to know what system and what function and map that function to another function inside of another system. So you have to be able to link your data, but you can't just do it with a select group and pass them around. If we, if we get together as a community with those other people we work with, we're really going to see some benefits. Our executable architecture. Our, we also apply executables, and in this case, we're able to figure out what messages are passed, what organizations, systems, decision logic, place criteria on, place criteria on our pattern flow or a process flow. We can use different distribution curves. We have different attributes. We can stall queuing points, figure out where delays and log jams are inside a system, and go ahead and apply that and see if go through and make 2B changes and say, okay, if we move this or we change this resource or the amount of burden placed on this resource, how much faster will it process? What are the outcomes of this? Rather than actually going to the field like we used to 20 years ago to do it, we're able to do it now with a reduced cost of the war fight. Biggest part of this whole thing though is it's great if one group sits there and does this, but unless you can share the data, unless I can give my data to another group and we can all get together and share data and have reusability, it's really a waste of effort because somebody's gonna have to come behind and do it over and over and over again. And what we've done is we've taken our architectures right now and we're working with a great group of people. There's SADI, there's training and doctrine command. There's many people in an effort to help federate data right now within, inside the Department of Defense. We, have, we take our information and it's placed in a SQL database at present. And we're able to place that SQL database and we're going through testing now so that you can reach inside, take a look at it, query data. And that's really important because I need to know that this activity uses this node, that uses this system, that uses this function. Not just, oh, here's an architecture. That looks great. Okay, give me another one. How do I figure it out? You've got to be able to map the data for the data to have value. And our Federation efforts are leading us that way. Some of the joint mission threads that we are going forward with, presently we have six. When we started joint mission threads, the thought was six isn't enough, give us more. Truth be told, if we could go back and take four and say we'll get the rest of those a little bit later. It's hard work, but it's getting done and everybody's got a hand in it. There are 26 joint mission threads total right now, fiscal year 10. We've got six of them on the board. That leaves us a great many more to do between 11 and 13. <coughs> But as we get the process down and we get help from the services, CODCOMs, and other parts of Joint Forces Command, we're seeing reality. The current status, we have a Joint Mission Threat CONOPS. It's in JSAP 136 review right now. Uh, the GEMTAP Working Group, Joint Mission Threat Architecture and Testing group, Working Group. Uh, they're working on an implementation plan. The Joint Mission Threat Senior Warfighters meet in May. Uh, there are six GMTs, as I said before, in various stages of composition. I think the ones that are <coughs> A tier one level of completion or CAS or close air support, joint personnel recovery. Uh, we've just begun counter IED, uh, IAMD, and at the tier two level, we have two of them complete, those being joint personnel recovery and joint close air support. So, and those same ones are also going to coordinate implementation. 
So things are moving forward, and really it's, we were able to go ahead and do a lot of this based on architecture and the value of the architecture. This is kind of our timeline and our way forward and where we see ourselves going over the next few years and how long it takes. It takes us about six months to do a uh, tier one joint mission grid, about an additional 12 months to um, do a strand, the strand levels, and we can do very, numerous strands at the same time. So you may do three strands in 12 months. Uh, from the coordinated implementation of tier three level, that takes us 12 to 18 months. That's a little harder because we fall into fiscal cycles. We have to make sure that we're on, we're on track with comm cycles and we're dollar fit and how we can go ahead and affect those changes in, in program managers' office budgets so that we uh, do fall in line with them. What Akash and I were trying to show you today is whether it be civilian, military, the DODEP has real really reusability and has real value. Joint mission threads have value. And it's all about the architecture. Just, I think it's a wonderful thing and we're able to use it. And it's able to facilitate many great things and save a lot of dollars out there when done properly. Any questions? Able to, uh, 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 link those things um, so you, you, you dealt with trade and you, you said the link your architecture to their operational architecture? So yes, well even our architecture have operational portions in it. Yeah. So we have operational and system views. Uh, we've been able to link with some of Mr. Bandier's people on their operational architectures. Many of his operational architectures are further down the line and you can go more in depth in the tactical level than some of ours do. But we're working in concert so we can make that happen. Uh, some of the some of the efforts in trying to tie uh, readiness and uh, joint operations are uh, mechanisms like the universal joint task list, UJTM. So if you train to a certain set of uh, specifications, the, so, the same specifications are also used to build your operational architecture artifacts. And that way you try to get a uh, correlation between your readiness and your execution. You need to have a common invariant set of structures that people who are getting ready are using uh, will be used by the battle commander to try to put together a battle plan. <laughs> As what you have is a disconnect between your training and uh, and your uh, your uh, exercise or your, or your war fighting operation. Any more questions? 